The soft lock in the game is an art. How can you fadangle your way into a situation so untenable and unhopeful that you cannot possibly find a way out? The Casper soft lock series is really entertaining. I've been enjoying it a lot recently. I asked if it was okay to react to a few of these videos. They said, absolutely go for it, which I really appreciate and is super nice of them, but they do have a whole playlist just filled with these videos, 19 of them. So please go and watch some on their channel. Today we're checking out settlements that you'll never own. Here we go. I do like the intro. That background is so unique. I feel like Hello. it's kind of like the branding of the channel, right? Because you see like it changes colors and he has his yellow channel. Hello everyone. But there's Welcome also the blue channel too. I, I just like, I just really like the branding that they have going on here. Hello internet users and welcome back to another video. Once hey, again, we're gonna be taking a Pokemon save file and turn it into something incredibly horrifying by using <laughs> the game's mechanics in unexpected ways. That's a really funny way to introduce a video. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. We're gonna really mess some shit up today. Whoa, <laughs> where did the camera go there? Jesus, we're gonna really make some terrible things happen. They're gonna scream. You might be scared, actually. We can create situations where it becomes almost unplayable, nearly forcing the player to delete everything and start over. Pokemon in particular is a series that can have several of these soft lock situations. Ah, bold spender. Nothing on the head there. Very cute. Many of which I've previously covered on this channel, also showing how you can escape under even more ridiculous circumstances. That is true. From what I've seen from these series is the commenters and the viewers will suggest a situation that seems completely unescapable, and then somehow Picasso just finds a way out. I was trying to play along last time we did a reaction. I'm gonna do the same thing this time. But this is the greatest game of resource management that you could play. Despite the developer's best efforts, when you have a game with hundreds of creatures, moves, items, and abilities, you can easily overlook how some of these can cause problems when they interact with each other in certain ways. Today, I'm going to be showing you all another example of one of these soft locks with two slightly different setups. And you can get yourself trapped on Doofit Island as well. If the boat's not there, there's no leaving. You'll be trapped just like everybody else on that island. You thought it was a nice sunside resort? S sunside? What is that? Seaside resort? No, it's a horror story just waiting for the main character, and that's you. You're, it's waiting for you. So settle in and get ready for one of the most evil things you can do to a Pokemon game. To start, okay. the game we will be doing this on is Pokemon Emerald version. When it comes to the Generation 3 games, they- Oh, you could also get yourself trapped on Doofoot Town, because if you don't have a flyer, you don't have a surfer, that's it, it's Jova. They've become pretty infamous for having a lot of potential for creative soft locks. The most infamous of these oversights is the very existence of a little place called Pacifilog Town. It's small, completely surrounded by the ocean, and doesn't really make much sense when you look at the, the bridge down there. I guess everyone's just wet all of the time in Pacific Log Town. A bit salty, really. And has no shop. With a few simple steps... A oh yeah, they don't have commerce. How does this society even function? They have no shops, they just have houses. I, I suppose they hunt for fish. But, but where's the video game console gonna come from? Where can I play Fortnite in Pacific Log Town? A player can easily make it so that they're stuck here, and it's impossible to leave or even continue playing. If this is your first time seeing one of these videos, I've used this town quite a bit before. However, I've never done something that actually involves escaping the town itself. A Cephalog mostly just ends up being the bad ending if the player gives up. So with that in mind... The bad ending? Hey, listen, I could think of some worse places to have a bad ending. This seems like a pretty chill resort. A nice place to hang out. People would play big money in the real world to go and here. This episode will be about creating and showing off that ridiculous escape. Here's how I intend to do that. For the first step, I'm going to need to make sure this emerald save file has been played through up to Pacifilog Town while making Yeah, I mean, that's that's a pretty good place to start. Yeah. Sure to prepare some things along the way. This information is probably going to seem really random, but bear with me as it'll all make sense soon. First okay. of all, during the initial playthrough, I'm going to need to avoid picking up as many HMs as possible. The game Wait a will How can you how can you not pick up Rock Smash, though? Is there a way to not have Rock Smash? Because you need to get it to go to the fourth gym. You need to get it to go to Mount Pyre. You need to get Rock Smash in order to surf anywhere, right? I, I think it's a required part of the game. Unless you can somehow circumnavigate this entire area, go like the back way through Mount Chimney. Points force me to pick up Surf and Fly during cutscenes, but this won't matter at all. The important thing is that I avoid taking any of the others like Strength and Rock Smash. You might ask how it's even possible to avoid these items when- 
Hey, he's read my mind. That's exactly what I did. And the moves are required for progress. Yep. Technically, you don't actually need the HM itself. You're good as long as you could just trade over a Pokemon that already oh. has the required move. Oh, okay. That makes sense. No, I get it. You're right. Talk you're right. Them. As long as you've got the needed badge and move, the game doesn't really care if you've never talked to people like the Rock Smash dude in Mauville. So That's crazy because he's the most interesting NPC. I mean, what's he smashing rocks so much for? <laughs> what's his story? Where, where did he grow up? Where, where were his parents like? Were they, all, were they archaeologists? By doing this, we can keep these key items out of the inventory as the game is played. For the second step, I'll need to make sure I only pick up the old rod in Duford and completely ignore the good in Super Rods later in the game. And also, I suppose you could just not get the old rod to begin with. You don't have to get the, any of the rods. You don't have to interact with any of these fishermen at all. I suppose it might be important for something that happens later. Maybe you need to get a water type, but then you can't get good water types. You need to get like magic Next, up. Next, I'm going to make sure I have a level five shiny Bagon that knows the moves double team, attract, focus energy, and roar. And Okay, I could follow along with the other things. That kind of made sense. But a level five shiny Bagon with the specific moves. Uh, there's got to be a story here. There's going to be a well, narrative. All of these moves have had their PP maxed out. Oh, okay. That's very important. Maybe there's going to be some kind of like wild battle. Solon, so, oh, it's, so you can't struggle, right? And finally, right before we set things in motion at Pacifilog Town, we'll need to talk to this man and receive the TMs for frustration and return. With these seemingly okay. random preparations taken care of, we next need to set up the actual lock at Pacifilog itself. So the actual lock will be, okay, you get yourself in a situation, you release your uh, Pokemon that can surf and fly and stuff like that. Oh, but Daniel, you can't release Pokemon that can surf and fly. There's ways to do it. There's, don't you worry. Don't you worry your little head. There'll be a way to take care of that. Here's how this is done. During the game, I've mainly used the starter and two other Pokemon that know all of the HM moves. With the po Okay, we chose Blaziken, which I mean is fine. I guess we couldn't choose Swampert. I guess we could choose Swampert. Because that could be your HM user at the same time as uh, you wouldn't have to get Zigzagoon if it... Well, I guess you have to trade it over. You could trade over a Mudkip. That'll make it harder because then you'd have to deal with the Pokemon not listening to you. Also, this bird sprite is really cool. I don't think I've ever paused on this exact frame of the flying sprite. And I think that's very cool. Party as it is. Oh, I, I like how this section of the video also is called The Nightmare. Great, let's let's dive into this, shall we? Now, I'll head to Pacifilog and use the Pokemon Center. This will mark the town as the location I'll be sent to in the case of a defeat. From there, I'll then fly to Mauville and head over to the nearby daycare. Here, I'll enter and give my two eight. Actually, that is a good point. I do think it's weird that the last Pokemon Center is the one you visit, and it's not the nearest Pokemon Center. It's like, I guess we didn't really have Google Maps, in 2004, you couldn't just like get your phone open and stop flicking through Google Maps to find your nearest hospital. You just go to the one that you know. But really, if you have one right next to you, you're not gonna trail all the way back to Pacific Lockdown. It will most likely be the closest one to them in this video. But it is funny, the idea of, oh, I got knocked out and I'm in Moss Deep, but the last one I used was in Pallet Town. All right, gotta go to Kanto. Wait, oh no, there's no Pokemon Center in Pallet Town. They have no healthcare. HM users to the old woman. The reason we do this is because in Gen 3, the game won't let you release your last users of an HM move. By putting these Pokemon in the daycare instead, we can still remove them from the party. Once this is done, we get to my favorite part. Using the PC inside the daycare, we'll then be releasing the beloved starter who carried us so far into the game. This is my favorite part. I love saying goodbye to my friends. I love never seeing them again. Goodbye forever. Everything is changed now. I only cry a little bit. This will leave us with only the Bagon, with no other Pokemon in the PC. Next, we'll walk outside and go into the nearby tall grass. Why does it have to be shiny? Is it so during battles it plays the shiny animation and wastes more of your time? After encountering a Pokemon, we will intentionally lose, sending our character all the way back to Pacifilog Town. Following this, the next step is to open the inventory and throw away every item we possibly can. When this oh, come on. I mean, you can keep the X speed, though, surely. Done, there shouldn't be anything left except a couple key items in the HMs. Oh, but the and X now, speed, with though. everything done, we'll save the game, completing the nightmare. If you've been following along up to this point, you should understand how dire this situation is. Okay, so this situation, we can't fly. We can't do anything that might get us out of the situation. We can't surf. We can't trade to get any Pokemon because you need two Pokemon to trade. So there's no way that you can get any Pokemon in your game. There's also no way that you can battle any Pokemon with the exception of the old rod. But the old rod would give you 
what, like Magikops, something like that, but you also can't do any damage to any of them because of the fact that your Begone has so much PP and no attack and moves. Magikarp would end up knocking itself out with Struggle eventually, maybe, and that might be the only way to get out and maybe the only way to level up. But why is it shiny? I'm so Why is it shiny? Because Bagon is our only Pokemon, we have no way of leaving the town. Even though we still have the HMs for Surf and Fly, the little dragon is unable to learn them. Aw, poor little guy. And this is really heartbreaking because Bagon's entire thing is that it just really wants to fly. So now we're trapped in a situation where the only way we could possibly escape it is if you could surf or fly. Bagon wants to fly, but it can't, and that will spell its own demise. It's really sad. There's a narrative going on here. In addition to that, because there's no shop in this town, it's impossible to buy Pokeballs to catch anything else. I'm going to emphasize this point by putting a map of the town on screen. Ah, that's a map of the town. Because I still get regular comments asking why I just don't go to the shop this town doesn't have. <laughs> it's because people haven't played this game before. They don't even know what they're now talking that that's about. Covered, you should now be able to see why this save is now almost unplayable. If you were to hand the cartridge over to someone and told them to escape, they'd be in for a surprise. Oh, this is basically an escape room. This is an interesting concept, though, because I assume that there definitely is a way for us to escape Seeing this. that they can barely do a thing, except walk around a few houses now. However, there is still technically two things that the player can do to escape. Let use the old rod, right? I mean, that seemed to be a very important part of the story coming up to this and leading up to it. So you use the old rod. I, I guess you make Magikarp struggle and then Pokemon die and then you learn a move eventually. I, I don't know what else you could Let's do. Let's go over what those are. The first is the complicated method. While Bagon is unable to fly, as you may have guessed because of the thumbnail, its evolution, Salamence, can. So no. logically, if you want to leave this town, all no. you have to do is train Bagon until it evolves to Shellgon at level 30. That is a disgusting shiny for Shellgon. I'm really sorry. That's not a nice shiny. And then to level 50 when it becomes Salamence. I wish they'd made Salamence purple. That would be cool. So the question becomes, how do we train Bagon under these circumstances? It's just the magic. Yep, there it is, the magic ops. But would they even struggle to death? I'm pretty sure you would lose before they lose, wouldn't you? Recall this Pokemon was set up with four specific moves with their PP maxed out. All oh, of these gross. are virtually useless and are unable to cause damage. This means that if you wanted to use the old rod to find Magikarp encounters, you would be forced to sit there wasting its moves away until it could use struggle. In well, you technically could do it. It would give you no experience, and big on, as we all know, since dragons are very hard to raise, has a very low experience gain threshold to leveling up, so it's gonna take a very, very long time. This is designed to waste as much of your time as humanly possible, even down to the big on being shiny, so the uh, shiny animation plays. In total, it will need to go through a hundred- Oh my god, you have double team as well, so it misses. Can struggle miss in this game? And raw? Oh my god. You'd have to just spam focus energy the entire time, right? That's the only way this is possible, because if you use a tract, then it'll skip turns from the opponent while they're immobilized. 28 turns to make that happen, which is a very time-consuming endeavor. You also need to keep in mind that every time Roar is used, it will force the encounter to end, costing you more time as you'll have to fish for another Pokemon. Oh, and you have to fish too. You have to play the fishing mini game. This is a this is a nightmare. And even worse, Magikarp isn't the only Pokemon that can be fished up with the old rod in this game. If a Tentacool appears, it'll always outspeed the level five dragon and damage it. Because struggle causes recoil damage, you absolutely do not want it taking damage while you're trying to deplete its PP. Sure, you could heal it at the Pokemon Center, but this will just also replenish all of its PP. Oh, this it is a nightmare. Nothing. Because Tentacool cannot be reliably escaped from, this will also force the player to save the game between encounters so they can quickly reset if Tentacool appears instead of Magikarp. This, this is the worst. I mean, there's got to be something else you can do. Will, of course, cost more time. Now at the but it is technically possible. It would just take many, maybe months of your actual real life. At this point, some of you might be asking, can't we just teach Bagon an attacking move? The answer no. to that is yes and no. First, well, I mean, you could level it up, but there's no TMs. There's nothing you can teach and there's no HMs that you can teach it because you don't have any. You can't teach it Rock Smash or Strength because I don't even know if it learns those moves, but it, you don't have them to begin with. With how the save file was set up, we don't have any TMs or HMs that Bagon can learn. It is actually capable of learning moves like Cut, Strength, and Rock Smash, which is why I intentionally worked around picking them up. As well, the NPC that gives the frustration in return TMs will eventually give another one, but only after a week of real time passes. Oh, you have to wake up. 
a week of real time. <laughs> That's such a specific amount of time, too. I wonder why they programmed it like that. And even then, he only hands out more TMs if the Pokemon in your party have either really high or really low friendship. For this to happen, you'll have to be in and out of encounters anyway, so it'll be an enormous amount of time added onto the escape, no matter how you look at it. He says, I'll give you a TM that's suitable for your Pokemon. So when you roll up and you have something that's low friendship, he says, whoa, oh man, damn, this thing hates you. Yeah, no, he wants he wants you dead. He wants to beat you to death with hammers. Yeah, you should take this uh, frustration TM. I think you'll make good use of this, buddy. Aside from those TMs, the only other way for Bagon to have an attacking move is to reach level 17, where it'll learn Headbutt. As 17. I'm sure you can imagine, reaching that level when you can only KO with Struggle will definitely take a while. Speaking of which, exactly how much experience do you think you can even get with this method? Since Struggle causes recoil- I figured it out. This is what Hell is. This is- I finally figured it out. Hell is not burning in, in fires for eternity. It's- it's doing this. It's doing this, except your- your game is permanently set to 75% of original speed. Oh my god. You know what? I'll, I'll take the Hellfires over that one, bud. Oil damage, you're only getting a few Magikarp knockouts before Bagon faints, and you're back in front of the Pokemon Center with all 128 move PP again. I tested this myself, and it took 53 minutes of constant encounters until I was able to finally get experience with Struggle. And after all- Oh my god, 58 minutes for one ped peddling piece of experience? All of that, I didn't even get to level 6. So just imagine, if it takes almost an hour to make that little progress before it resets, how long do you think it'll take to learn Headbutt? Of course, having an attack move will make getting to Salamence much faster when it happens, but that- This softlock is worse than normal softlocks, because it's not impossible. It's just so mind-numbingly torturous that you don't want to. You could save the game if you wanted to. You could do it, but you'll have to sacrifice a piece of your soul. But that doesn't change the fact that you'll only have low-level Pokemon to fight the entire time. Obviously, there is a ton of RNG- Oh, and you have to get to level 55 as well, by the way. ...involved in leveling up Bagon this way. And you have to do the fishing minigame every single time. But I think it's pretty clear that escaping this way will take a long, long time. I'd even say that it's a pretty safe bet that you could beat the entire game start to finish multiple times before Bagon even gets close to becoming a Shellgon. And this right here is the chaos of this lock. It's 100% possible to escape, but it's so time-consuming and boring that you might as well just give up the shiny and start a new game. <laughs> I love these little situations that we find ourselves in. Oh, but is there another way to get Before out? Before I end this video, though, there still is one more escape method I need to talk about. You okay, I mean, you just, yeah, there's an escape method. Just find an escape rope, just like tie it to the ceiling. Find a chair. I remember at the beginning, I mentioned that there can be two slightly different setups to this. Depending on what you prefer, it's possible to either include or remove the second escape option when you set this up. What is the second escape, you might be wondering? Well, in Pacific- I- okay. Oh, check out this horsey. Log, only in Pokemon Emerald version, there's an NPC that wants to trade his horsey for a Bagon. Oh, okay. What a terrible trade that is. Why would anyone do that? Why does the Bagon shine? If you were to do this, you'd immediately gain access to a Pokemon that can surf and escape the town. The downside oh. <laughs> to this is that you have to give away a shiny in order to get it. Oh, <laughs> Come on! Before you ask, no, it isn't possible for this horsey to be shiny. The game simply does not let that happen. It's this deal seesaw. is always going to make you feel bad. But like I said, you could always just do the trade beforehand when setting this up, so this option's not even available. And that about <laughs> covers so everything I wanted to talk about for this video. <laughs> That's why it's a Bagon! That's why it's a shiny Bagon! God damn it, alright! see, escaping from Pacifilog is not a very fun experience. Because Bagon cannot fight without struggle, you'll have to spend an incredibly long time fishing and wasting moves just for a tiny amount of experience. But all you of that just, would have to be You could just get the soul of the horsey. So it can finally become a dragon that can fly away. It's actually pretty fitting, considering that Bagon's Pokedex entries talk about how it desperately wants exactly. to fly. That's what so I the said. The question now is, would you be willing to help make its dreams come true? Or would you Or would you give it away? Would you just give up and give it away. 
My name's Picasprey, oh. and thanks. Oh man, this has a narrative to it. Damn, that was that was good. That had a narrative to it. Okay, that had a story behind it. I really like that. That was cool. Let me see the comments. I love how this is set up like a tutorial, as if anyone on Earth would ever have time to do this. Imagine if there was a site where you could download save files containing these soft locks, where you have to solve this to escape. That could be really, really interesting. The ending was great. Will you help big on Rachel's dreams, or just give it away for an easy escape? I wasn't expecting this to have a story. But you know what? I'm very pleasantly surprised. Thank you so much for allowing me to react to this. By the way, I think it's fantastic. There are many more soft lock picking videos that you can check out. They're all fantastic. I would highly recommend that you do. And if you want to see more of my dumb face, then you can always subscribe here as well.